Guys, I am in Miami at Florida International University with Eric Salna. Eric, thank you very much for having us. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Um, we're standing in front of the Wall of Wind, a.k.a. Wow! It's 12 giant fans that are able to uh, create what kind of a hurricane are we talking about? Well, we can, we can create up to a Category 5 hurricane wind speeds over 157 miles per hour. Right now, what we're testing is uh, transmission lines for power. And that's important because, of course, we all depend on electricity as homes go all electric more and more, right? Those things can create what I think is a very laminar flow, which is interesting to us because in homes, we're very kind of concerned with airflow measurements. And airflow is the hardest thing to measure because it's squirrely. It kind of goes all over the place. But here you can make it go perfectly straight. And I stepped into the flow and out of it. Is that your goal? Our goal is to certainly focus the wind towards the turntable where the structure is. But a hurricane wind is not nice and straight and laminar and smooth. It's actually very turbulent. We have engineered into the system a turbulent flow that mimics a hurricane flow. You know, at the surface where we are and our homes, we've got buildings and trees and structures, and that creates a friction layer. So in the real world, wind increases with height in a hurricane condition. So that's what we wanted to create here at the Wall of Wind in that flow management. The wind would increase with height because those tiles, those metal tiles, replicate the buildings and the trees and the obstructions. So over the ocean, there's not as much friction, right? So the wind speeds are pretty high over the water. As that hurricane cir circulation moves on land, on shore, and then starts moving inland, it slows down, but the winds also slow down as well. It can drop tremendous amounts of rain at that point, but the strongest and highest wind speeds are typically right along the coast. We do have another feature that we can add to the system that's fairly new to the wall of wind. We've been all about a hurricane, but we can now create a downburst wind. A downburst wind comes from a severe thunderstorm. So a column of air that drops vertically down from that cloud, hits the ground and spreads out, which can do a lot of damage, sometimes uh, perceived as it was a tornado, but it never was. It was just a downburst straight line wind. So we are now getting into some research related to that. This is the place that we use to put most of the sensors that we're going to install in the different models and all the cables from accelerometers, load cells and strain gauges come down here so we can test it without disrupting the flow around the models. So that's basically what we have in here. When we have strong winds, just like the hurricanes, the loading that we have on the towers are different from what has been accounted for in the current codes of practice. And you think that the engineering assumptions that we made in the modeling from a long time ago isn't right? Which yes, is why we're actually yes, testing. Yes, some of that. And also, you know, currently now we're having we're experiencing more intense winds. Mm. And so we need to design for the expected intense winds that we're having. To update the models yes, for like global models. weirding. All right, cool. Winds are more intense. Thank you very much, buddy. We are just over 10 years old. We debuted on the 20th anniversary of Hurricane Andrew, and we just had the 30th anniversary this past August. And so as part of your anniversary celebration, you're planning a new facility. What is that one going to be able to do? Well, as we've been saying, we can go to Category 5 hurricane here, 157 miles per hour. We have a new vision, FIU, the lead university, a total of nine universities, to build a new NSF research facility, plan to go to 200 miles an hour. Think about it, Hurricane Dorian off our coast in the Bahamas, 185 miles per hour. So we, that new facility will be able to capture those higher end wind speed hurricanes and the other hazards with a hurricane, storm surge and wave action. Think of a big pool of water now in front of those fans of the new facility and now the wind blowing that water, pushing that water right up the structures. So now we can do the wind and storm surge research all at the same time. And it's an exciting vision. It's gonna be at least five years away, but it is the next step where we wanna take this research. And of course, we all know what, that it's bad stuff that happens, but what they're focused on is testing the solutions to see how effective the solutions are in the engineering. The other NARI research stations are featured in season three of Home Diagnosis. So you're gonna see Eric there, you're gonna see this facility and more in that upcoming season. So please do make sure to check that out at homediagnosis.tv. If you'd like to join us for more, make sure you're subscribed, comment below, ask questions, things like that. Tune in next time.